Welcome home, brave heroes. I'm Ash, this is Ash Quest, and it's time for another episode of Lone Wolf, Flight from the Dark, the Kai series, book one, Home Guard Press Edition. Given the trajectory of our adventure, I think that it's only a matter of time before we either finish or fall prey to one of the many combats that seem to plague this particular playthrough. I've already used all of the healing ability that I wish to allow for a single adventure, having exhausted the 10 points of healing, as mentioned by the optional rule. We are implementing two additional household rules for those of you who have not been following the previous episodes, if you happen to be stepping in here. We are rolling a 10-sided die instead of using the random number table in the back of the book. And we are also, ha, ah, six. I thought I'd roll a three for reasons that would be apparent if you saw the last episode. We are also implementing a sort of save state system by which if I die in battle, I will attempt that battle a second and third time if need be. And if I die the third time, I will revert to an earlier point and make a different decision to try to skip the battle. That hasn't been necessary yet, except for running into some wolves. Uh, the pack of wolves, they were impossible to fight. I would have needed incredible number generation luck. And besides that, uh, I think... I think it was just meant to be a very difficult fight, so that's fine. That's absolutely fine. I also started that battle with less than ideal health, but it's fine. It's fine. We are going to start at 197, which is the last place that I saved. According to what I wrote down, I have seven endurance points. I kind of hesitate because I want to call them hit points, health points, or body points, but I have to remember, this is the world of Lone Wolf, and they are endurance points. 197. Let us begin. The Drakkar lies dead at the bottom of the ferry boat. You turn his body over with the toe of your boot and search his pack and cloak. Brave of us, you discover a short sword, weapon, and six gold crowns which you may keep if you so wish. Then you roll his corpse over the side of the boat and watch as it floats for a few seconds before disappearing down into the icy black depths. Snatching up the oars, you take a seat at the rear of the boat and row across to the far side of the lake. Here you abandon the ferry and continue on your way. That's lovely. I'll take the six crowns. I wonder what he was doing with them. So instead of 28, it's 34. I can't believe the gall of that fool. He was really going to try to assault us on the boat. Now, I'm running out of room on my paper, so instead of the 197, I'm going to erase all of these previous save points because this is where I, I'm definitely going to pick up from no matter what. I'm not going any farther back. 197, actually 172. Seventy-two. Night falls, and you are soon engulfed by darkness. To press on any further would be futile, for you could easily lose your way in the surrounding woodland. Tethering your horse to a tree, you settle down on a bed of soft bracken and pull your kai cloak about your shoulders. You are very tired and fall easily into a deep sleep. You may restore three endurance points. How lovely is that? So... I need to make some room here to restore my endurance points. Um, I'm back up to 10 now after this lovely deep sleep. And I just want to say a massive thank you to everybody who's been following the channel and who's been following this particular series. Also, there are those of you who did not know about Lone Wolf. You haven't yet experienced the wonder and the horror that is Lone Wolf. And I'm learning from you guys that 
my videos have been a source of introduction. And that, my friends, I am so, so, so glad to know about. I'm so glad to hear that. Thank you so much for sharing that detail with me. I had no idea that I would ever be able to introduce Lone Wolf to somebody. I just assumed that if you found the video, you already knew about it and you were interested in watching me perish repeatedly. So that's so cool. Also, we've got some Lone Wolf fans who've been following and watching and who've been enjoying the playthrough. And I really am thankful for the feedback on that as well. So back to, back to where we were with our three endurance points that we restored. One more thing before we get back into the play. Uh, thanks to anybody who wants to give me advice on what I could have done, but please spare those kinds of comments because um, I may wish to enjoy this adventure again one day. And in doing so, I'd like to experience it uh, with the choices that I make rather than metagame or use any spoiler knowledge or anything like that. So just one more point before we go on. And now you are awoken by the sound of marching troops. You get to your feet and stare back in the direction of the lake. On the far side, you can see a column of black figures marching along the shore towards the fer ferry boathouse. They are Drakarim, and they have an escort of doom wolves and jacks with them. A crown suddenly appears from above the distant trees and swoops down to land on the roof of the boathouse. It is being ridden by a figure clad in a red hooded cloak. For a few minutes, the cloaked figure appears to converse with the Drakar leader. Then the crown takes to the sky once more and comes flying across the lake. It is approaching the section of the forest where you and your horse are standing. If you wish to use the Kai discipline of camouflage to hide yourself and your horse, turn to 114. If you do not possess this Kai skill, you can mount up and ride deeper into the forest in the hope of evading the Kron. Or you can draw your weapon and get ready to defend yourself in case the Kron and its rider are preparing to attack. Turn to 29. I will do that. I'm not a coward, and I've been doing a lot of fights this time around. By the way, <clears throat> I think I took that broadsword, or that short sword. I don't seem to have a weapon in slot one, so I'll go ahead and take this short sword. I can't really use it uh, with any advantage. I'm still using my Warhammer, which I have Warhammer weapon skills, so it's going to be primarily Warhammer, but it's okay. I have it as a backup in case something happens to the Warhammer. Why did I jinx myself? You feel certain that the Crown and its rider know exactly where you are. Resigned to the fact that combat is now unavoidable, you prepare yourself as the winged creature draws closer. The Crown comes diving down and its rider lets out a scream that freezes your blood. This creature is a Vordak, a fierce lieutenant of the Dark Lords. He brings the Crown in to hover directly over your head. Then he leans down from his saddle and attempts to crush your skull with a huge black mace. He is upon you and you must fight him. Deduct two points from your combat skill unless you have the Kai Discipline of Mind Shield, for this evil creature is attacking with its mind force as well as its formidable black mace. I don't have Mind Shield. So, I'm going to have to deduct two from my overall combat score, which is actually 21 because of my 17 base combat score. And the combat skill plus the two from my Warhammer, plus what would have been two from my Mind Blast, it doesn't say that he's immune to Mind Blast, but since he's attacking me with Mind Blast as well, I have to deduct too. So the overall combat skill that I have for this fight is 19, which matches his exactly, and he has 27 endurance versus my 10. This is going to be quite the fight, and we're going to mark down 29 as the page uh, where we are starting this fight, because if I win, this is going to be the, the place where I turn from, or at least 270 if I win. So let's go. Let's go. We have a combat ratio. How many times did I say I needed to print this and have it ready for my use so I didn't have to keep turning to it? 19 and 19, it is zero. So this here is the column we're going to use. If I, well, as I roll, we're fighting this Vordak in the the Kron, we got a four. <clears throat> the four is our first roll. It's not a great roll at all. It's not a great roll. We are going to suffer very badly. Uh, and 
since we have 29 endurance points to keep track of, we'll use the six-sided dice to set those up. I have low hopes for this fight with this bad start, and I'm still pretty salty about my previous fight, which was, here we go, set that to five, that's 29, which was very, very poor indeed. I keep forgetting to turn to the very back. We have a lot of really challenging fights in this one. A lot of challenging fights. So, with a four, we're here. The enemy loses six and I lose three. So we can take away one of the d6 and we can mark my health from 10 to seven. And now we're going to enter another bout of combat. Here we go. It's an eight. That is a great roll. That's a fantastic roll. And an eight means I lose no health and the enemy loses 10 endurance points. So we're going to take away one of the sixes and we'll reduce another six to a two for a total of 10. Very good. We really, we really, we really struck him hard. We're trying to lay him low. We are trying to get this Kron and this Vordak done. Another roll for the third round of combat as he comes swooping in again, letting out his deathly roar, attacking my mind. And I can't take much more of it. It's an eight again. Yes. This time, I roll out of the way of the swooping Kron, attacking its side with the Warhammer, using the momentum from my roll to sort of turn instantaneously and thwack it really hard into its side. We're losing the six die, we're losing the two die, and we're reducing the five to a three for a total of 10 endurance points. The enemy is on his last leg. The Kron goes crashing into the forest brush and the Vordak leaps off of it, hobbling towards me, death in its eyes for one more strike in this round of combat. Am I prepared to deal with him? Am I reading his movements correctly? With a roll of one, I am, but at a cost. The player character loses five endurance points while the enemy loses three. That's all the enemy has left and the enemy is dead. I, however, have two endurance points left. I barely survive his last attack. If we die at a future point, I may return to this combat and see if I can win with more than two endurance points. But we'll go to 270. You hear the angry cries of the Drakarim come drifting across from the opposite side of the lake. They have witnessed the demise of the Vordak and Kron, and they are intent on enacting their revenge. You must leave here before any more Kron and riders appear. Speedily, you mount your steed and hurry away, pushing on further into the welcoming cover of the forest. Turn to 21. I do have a potion. I can restore some, some endurance points. I believe, I don't remember if I used this potion or not already in a previous playthrough. Um, it's difficult for me to remember that far back. I seem to have maybe drawn a line through it, but I don't know if I did end up using it or if I restarted a battle and ended up sort of redacting the fact that I used it. Oh well. I suppose, I suppose I can use it because even if I have used it already uh, and I'm choosing to not use the healing point every single non-combat section, it will almost be as if I was just using my healing ability. Oh, but what, what page was I supposed to turn to? 21. You have ridden for roughly two miles through the tangle of trees when the ground ahead becomes soft and marshy. Pick a number from the random number table. If the number is five or above, you see the danger in time to be able to avoid it. You manage to steer clear of the morass and you may now continue by turning to 189. If it is below five, your horse is suddenly plunged into thick mud up to its belly. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. We better roll before we go any further and hope that we can finally roll high when we really need to roll high out of combat. A five. It is a five. We've saw the danger. And it's time to go 
to 189. It looks like there was actually a death effect there as well in that same paragraph. We don't have to worry about it now. You give silent thanks for your Kai training and your quick wits. For that bog is a deadly killer, and it could easily have proven as perilous as you as any Gyak, Drakkar, or Kran. Mindful of the delay, you push on further into the trees that lie to the south. Soon you happen upon a wide woodland path. You join this trail and head off in a southerly direction. Turn to 118. One eighteen. You join the trail and spur your horse to a gallop. You race down this long straight forest trail and, as you come to the crest of a gentle ridge, you catch a glimpse of Holmgard on the far horizon. Its high walls and tall spires are glinting in the morning sun. Finally, a ray of hope. This woodland path arrives at a junction with a broad highway. You recognize this road. It is the main turnpike which connects the northern port of Torrent to the capital, Holmgard. Confident now that you are heading in the right direction, you set off towards the south. As you ride the highway, you keep your eyes peeled for signs of Kron in the clear morning sky. Turn to 224. You have ridden for several miles and have seen no sign of refugees or enemy soldiers. You continue to ride as fast as your horse will carry you until you find yourself approaching a high ridge. You feel confident that you'll be able to see the capital from this high vantage point. As you crest the peak of the ridge, the sight that meets you on the far side is one that fills you with hope. But you quickly discover there is also a new challenge which must be overcome. Turn to 153. This is a big one. In the distance, you see the tall gray-white walls and glimmering spires of Holmgard. The colorful ban banners of the city's guilds are fluttering from the battlements in the fresh morning breeze. Stretching out toward the east, the mighty river Elidil winds its way from its source in the Dern Crag Mountains through the capital and out toward the broad estuary of the home gulf. When you turn your gaze toward the distant western peaks of the Dern Crags, there you behold a sight that blights this magnificent landscape. Hovering among its jagged mountain tops, like dark and malevolent storm clouds, are swarms of Kron. They are mustering their numbers in preparation for an attack on the capital. In the narrow mountain passes below these swarms, you see vast columns of enemy troops on the march. Clearly their intention is to assault and lay siege to home guard. You estimate that the main body of their vast army is no, now no more than two days' march from the city's walls. The king's highway from home guard to Torn crosses the fertile rolling plain and farmland surrounding the capital. At a gallop, you reckon you'll be able to reach the outer fieldworks of the city's defenses in under an hour. But to do so on horseback would entail having to cover several miles of open countryside without any protection overhead. This will make you vulnerable to attack from the air by marauding Kron. You ponder the alternative routes that could bring you to the capital and determine two other options. Nearby, you can see a small river. It is the Don, a tributary of the Elidil. It wends its sluggish way across the plain and flows into the Elidil less than a mile from the walls of the capital. If you were to abandon your horse, you could use the gentle current of the dawn to carry you downstream towards the city's outer defenses. The river's banks are steeply undercut for most of the way, and they would offer you some cover as you approach the fieldworks. Or there is the final alternative. Situated between the river dawn and the king's highway is a vast burial ground. This place is called the Graveyard of the Ancients. It was constructed many centuries ago, in an age before the summer lending laid claim to this land and transformed it into the fertile wonder you see today. The tombs and crumbling monuments of this ancient necropolis would certainly conceal your approach to the city, but it is a forbidden area. You shiver when you recall tales you've heard about the nameless horrors which supposedly lie here still, in restless sleep, waiting to corrupt and consume the unwary trespasser. Now which one do we do? Try the highway, reach the capital via the river, or risk the unknown perils of the graveyard of the ancients. When I last played, I believe I went to the graveyard of the ancients. And I think that there's a lot of danger to face there. 
but I think this time I may try the river. So we'll set our save point to 153, just in case this is an instant death route. And we will go ahead and turn to 135. You hurry down and peer over the steep undercut of the river dip bank. Below, you can see a tangle of driftwood that has gathered along the water's edge. A large tree trunk has grounded on the clay bank, and next to it there is a small canoe. If you wish to use the log as a means of floating downstream towards the city's outer defenses, turn to 223. If you wish to use the abandoned canoe instead, turn to 4. The log? I think not. We will turn to 4 and probably meant to think that exact thing. Four is probably a bad, bad idea. It is a small one-man canoe in very poor condition. The wood has split and warped, and the craft appears to be leaking in several places. You quickly patch up the worst of the holes with some clay and bail out most of the water that has collected in the bottom. This seems to stop the leaking for the moment. Stowing your equipment at the bow, you set off downstream using a piece of driftwood as a makeshift paddle. After a short while, you hear the sound of horses galloping toward you along the left bank. If you wish to use the Kai Disciple of Sixth Sense, which I don't have, never mind. If you do not possess it or choose not to use it, you can take precaution of hiding in the bottom of the canoe, or you can stand up at the canoe and try to attract the attention of the approaching riders. What will we do? Well, stay tuned for next time on Tome Tuesday when we work towards the end of our Kai's inaugural journey. And until then, Kai masters and brave heroes alike, thank you very much for watching. Please comment anything you like down below and I will see you in the next episode of Lone Wolf Flight from the Dark. Bye-bye for now.